welcome here live from the Forum, which is in the heart of the exhibition at EAO Congress, where in a minute we will receive our speakers from stage. They'll cross the exhibition and they'll join me here at the desk together with Iva Milenkovic, my expert co-host, and we will continue the discussion. We will be at least live for another hour, so sit back and relax, get your coffee, get a nice snack, because in this forum we will then First, challenge our speakers, ask all your questions, and then secondly, in half an hour, we will reflect together with Michael Payet, co-chair of the scientific committee here at the Congress, and look back at the last two days and look forward together with Mauricio Tonetti and Hans-Peter Weber, who you've just seen on stage, to the closing session of Congress, which is all about our dental implants for life. You've been participating in the session for the next last 90 minutes. What is your first reflection, first digest when you walk out of the room, Wim? Uh, to be honest, as we were speaking previously, and maybe some of our listeners were not there, we were discussing these things, uh, what is scientifically based and what is our own gut feeling or our experience. And I'm really happy that both of the speakers presented us evidence-based data. So science is speaking in uh, favor of concepts that they have been presented. So since the key or hot topic is ceramic implants, Dr. Benich really, really nicely presented that in terms of osseo integration, soft tissue integration and clinical performance in certain clinical situations, ceramic zirconia implants play equally well as titanium implants. Exactly. And when you say certain indications, I believe he refers especially to the more simple cases, right? Exactly. So for, as he mentioned, and we might discuss with it, and I would like our uh, guys from the audience to set up more and more questions. The discussion was really interesting, but there are still more open questions. So in uh, simple, straightforward cases in which there is sufficient amount of bone and good uh, soft tissue biotype in, me in terms of sufficient soft tissue and thick and not really scalloped soft tissue, we can go for ceramic implant. And as he mentioned, up to three units. This is still the like single missing tooth or two or up to three missing teeth. We still can uh, provide our patient with ceramic implants. As we uh, got from the audience and from the patients in those service, it seems that patient uh, prefer ceramic implants, no? That was the, that, that, that's something I wrote down. I found that the most fascinating quote in this session, that in the end there was some kind of conclusion that they said, I leave it up to my patients, which I mean, this is highly medical application, right? How can we leave that up to patient's preference? You know, from prostodonti uh, prostodontics, since uh, we talked about there are several types of restorations, uh, we need to offer to our patients everything that it is available. So, but we need to offer and explain them scientifically and from the practice point of view what there is. So in terms of, let's say, restorations on teeth, we have old porcelain fused to metal restorations that perform very well. So we tell them uh, we are offering you this crown that has metal uh, on inner side and ceramic on the outer side. Then we, we have all ceramic restorations, which can be zirconia based, which can be other types of ceramics, uh, not to go too much into detail. So we, in regular prostodontic rehabilitation of our patient, we're offering them several rehabilitation types, several materials that perform in several ways, that have uh, different aesthetics, let's say, and that have different complication rates, accessories, that, that, that they have a different price as well, which is not irrelevant. So in terms in terms of implant, we are entering this new material. Uh, we might still wait a little bit uh, before offering to patients, but we need to offer them choices and possibilities that, that we have scientif scientifically proven, that, we, uh, that work in our hands. I mean, we need to have some experience, but in that terms, that is how we offer to the patient. Not like you have this blue color and red color, which do you like better, but you have for the given situation in your mouth, your clinical situation, we have one, two, three, four, five options. Let's discuss them These are the and let's and decide goals. together. It's also good for the patient to be involved in a decision-making process. That's, that's very true. Now, so if I summarize the debate, it's a new opportunity. We can go all ceramic on the implants, but it's not long-term proven in science. So what are some of the key risks 
that either viewers who are in academic research should go out and, and research, or at least the key risks that we should communicate to our patients? Wh where there are plenty of questions yet and plenty of the topics for the future research. As, uh, and as both uh, pr speakers outlined, uh, we need to prove first that ceramic zirconium implants uh, behave that well or equally well as titanium implants. So we might uh, reflect... In what key parameter though? Uh, in what respect? Well, in terms of stability, integration in both uh, hard and soft tissue in terms of uh, complications, whether we have complications or not, in terms of long-term stability, uh, we were there was an interesting discussion from the audience uh, comparing the orthopedic surge uh, surgery and complications with ceramic hip replacements. So we still don't know long-term what is going to happen with uh, zirconia implants. And as Dr. Kohal outlined in a nice way, uh, we are doing our best and providing uh, clear indications, clear treatment that are evidence-based and with good clinical practice. And then we're about to wait to see what's happening. And also another comment, maybe the audience could share with us their experiences with ceramic implants. It's not much of the clinicians still using ceramic implants. So if someone has an experience that would be interesting to hear about and to discuss with our speakers. Let's, uh, let's read out and let's understand what the key discussion is. Dimitar Tazewski. From Macedonia, huh? we know oh, who he is. Thank you for being so active with us. Um, he says, from the lecture, we conclude that zirconia has no data at all, just some articles that has breakage, odd, narrow zirconia implants. But implant companies go to zirconia direction because the patients want it. Yeah, so that's how he summarizes the conclusion. Obviously, the key scientific comment that was made by uh, Goran Benic is the width of the implant, right? There's a minimal width of four millimeters that at least we know. Because uh, there are those mechanical properties of the implants and Goran Benic also addressed the risk of fracture and all those mechanical properties. Zirconia is a very hard material that has huge mechanical resistance, but so since we experience a lot of complications uh, with chipping and, let's say, uh, veneering and laminating of the layers of ceramics in the prosthetic rehabilitation, it's... Uh, logical to expect that these complications are going to happen with ceramic implants as well. So in terms of mechanical stability and material uh, resistance to the occlusal forces during the time, it is an open question. Mm -hmm. I mean, Demeter is right. There is still not data to conclude straightforward, okay, I can be sure. But then it's happening. We exactly. cannot ignore it. Exactly. The clinical practice shows that's what Goran Ben is also clearly said. At the moment, we don't see major complications. So we don't have to be at all moment, scary yeah, about those no data. At the moment, it's going fine. By the way, I see them. At least it seems that we're waiting, we're waiting oh, for you guys. So are. please uh, join us. I have a question from Felipe Vieira, who is joining us uh, from Portugal. And he says, zirconia implant surfaces to enhance osseointegration are still a challenge. What do you think are the future perspectives? And also, how to avoid foreign body reaction profile of zirconia implant observed in V. Chapuis studies? I'm not sure what studies he's referring to there, but let's start with his first question first. So, what, is, what do you think are the future uh, perspectives on the surface to en enhance osseointegration? I think we, we heard this in the, in, in the presentation during the discussion that actually the Zirconia st systems are similar like titanium systems, like 50 or 20 years ago. So for sure there's going to be much more room for the improvement of the surfaces, and this is already happening. And we know from, uh, from different animal studies that, of course, depending on the surface, especially the structured surfaces, they do perform well. So of course there is going to be much evolution expected. Yeah, Ralph? Do, we, do you think really? I mean, with the titanium, impl titanium implants, we have surfaces now, okay, we take the one, a newer one from a, from a company uh, that works pretty well and the zirconia surfaces are similar. And with the titanium surfaces, we didn't see so, how shall I say, so a big uh, going on. So I, I don't think that it will be improved much more. So the surfaces we have so far, I think, are, are pretty good. Uh, similar. So, so you're concluding the whole topic of services is not that much of an issue going forward? Is that? I mean, there's, you, you can just uh, um, somehow change the services 
make it more biological, biomimetic materials on top of it. But this has been tried also with the titanium implants. And did it work? I don't know a surface with a biomimetic surface. No, we don't have it. So I think the surface discussion with zirconia implants is a discussion in vain at the moment. Okay. That's my opinion. But I, I'm not I don't, don't completely agree because not all this, I mean, there I have are, to agree there with are many, I I'm older than I, we I like older than you are. I, I was told the opposite. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, I mean, actually, of course, I mean, what we do know that the materials, so consider they have the, the same surface, they react in the same way for also integration, but we don't have really a lot of information from the different systems. So we don't have a lot of, you know, for, for all the systems, these data. No, no I thought, okay, I, now, I, now I got you. But we have surfaces performing similarly. Whether all the surfaces of all zirconia implants perform similarly to titanium, we don't know. I think I uh, can agree on that. Exactly. But regarding the surface, since uh, in titanium surface, we know that it is a rough surface. It might be prone to peri-implantitis. It might be a matter of discussion. Do you think in these terms of roughness, zirconia surface performs better or worse compared to titanium? This is just sticking in the dust. I, I cannot know, tell you. But there, and, and do we refer back then to no data? Or is there anything to expect there? If you would go out on an academic research into this topic, what would your hypothesis be? So consider we have really the same type of surface, there shouldn't be any major difference. There shouldn't be, no. So that should be a control study to check that, yeah? And how about the, um, the study that Philippe is referencing about foreign body reaction with zirconia? What do you know about that? I mean, you, with all nanoparticles, you might have foreign body reaction. Whether it's zirconia, whether it's titanium, whether it's lithium disilicate, whether it's, it's the nanoparticles. And so, um, there are studies using nanoparticles in, the, in the, the back muscle of rats, or what I know. And there is some reaction, but it's not all the time a reaction. So there might be a foreign body, but you might have with everything a foreign body reaction. So it's not specifically related to zirconia. So um, one of the key things currently, and, and that's the current state, it's, it's the one piece first, the two uh, piece. To what extent... Um, I think two things are interesting. Two-piece zirconia implants are coming to the market. How quickly will you think that's a, a viable and common available solution? I mean, I think, I mean, now we're really starting to get some interesting systems. So with, with uh, I mean, of course, it's, it's kind of a, it's a compromise because some systems are using the metallic components. So it's not completely metal-free. So not everybody's going to be happy with this. But in terms of the stability of the prosthetic connection, this might be currently the only possible stable solution. So of course, we just need more time to gather data. But I do think that if the equivalence of the zirconia implants is proven, so from that point on, this could be a, a major breakthrough that everybody is going to want a, cer a ceramic implant. So I think the, the things could ch change relatively fast. And would you still say, as you mentioned on stage, that's mainly then for the more simpler solution? Or do you think in the future we would be able to also do more complex mechanical constructions, maybe tilted implants with also zirconia? You know, the, the, the thing of the simple, simple cases, this is more related to the fact of the monotype implant. So, of course, if you're using the monotype implant, there is much less surgical and prosthetic flexibility. So it's better just to keep it, you know, just to stick to the simple cases. But, you know, from the moment that we have... Uh, stable and well functioning two piece implants, I think the indication range is going to extend. Exactly. Ralph, how do you feel about the future? I would like to have a two piece zirconia implant that I can place bone level, really bone level, with a non metallic screw. I saw there's one company advertising a ceramic screw. I didn't go into detail. However, an expert in zirconia said it would be impossible to create a zirconia screw then perhaps we have to go with some other materials. Bone level implant, same flexibility. I think then we can treat all the patients, as you said. I mean, then we can do all on 24 or something like that. All right. And, and would you say that, like Goran, that's preferable? That's where we want to go with the implant industry? Oh, well, well, it's preferable for the patient that have problems with metals, for sure. But whether it's prefer preferable in total, I, I, I cannot tell. I cannot tell. There will still be, uh, a doc I mean, doctors, companies want to sell their implants. So uh, 
they might prefer to, to stay with the titanium implants. Exactly. So, but it's a personal thing then. And uh, like Goran said, if we have all the, the, the same portfolio, I think it will be a breakthrough that we use uh, zirconia implants. I mean, for sure, I mean, for sure, there is a general trend in the direction of the metal-free solutions. I mean, we can observe this, what, what happened in the past 20 years with uh, prosthetics. Mm. I mean, it switched completely from the metal to the full ceramic reconstructions. I mean, not completely, but really for the, 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 the majority of the volume, really, it, it's changed dramatically. Exactly. And, 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 and I might be a bit cynical, but is the key conclusion from this battle of the concepts and this session then that that driver for non-metallic solutions is mainly due to both patient preferences, whether or not that is on the, on the right perception, and the industry, but at the moment we're not sure about the scientific basis for that? Is that where we are in 2018? I mean, the, I mean, the summary is that, that, that we, we don't have, I mean, Zirconia implants, these are newer devices, so we do not have long-term data, that's obvious, otherwise we wouldn't be here discussing about this, so it's just a matter of time. But it's uh, probable that uh, there are no major differences, or maybe if there are some differences, we still don't know, so we, we, again, we need time. If we look into the near future in the dental clinical practice, we might come into the situation that we now have to restore or remove zirconia implants. Do, does any of you have already experience with that? <laughs> Ralph, you're smiling immediately. <laughs> why is that? Well, why is that? I mean, we conducted a clinical study uh, with a new zirconia implant system, I think uh, 10 years ago we started. And uh, we saw with this new, it's not on the market actually, so it was good to have this clinical study done in a university uh, that we... Uh, I don't know, some kind of perimplantitis, huge perimplantitis. So we had to remove some of these implants. So I have some experience removing that and also one fracture. So, well, yeah. And uh, it's, uh, for me, it's not different. We discussed it on stage already. Then removing a titanium implant with a trefine burr. If there are different op options to do that, what you discussed, that you use a small burr, removing the bone, still you remove the bone in the upper area. So, well, yeah, I have experience. And for me, it was... Uh, not different to remove a titanium implant. It was, it's the same mess, actually. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah it's, it's, it's a complex and messy procedure, but yes. there's no big difference with no. the existing. No, no, you don't have then the gray particles of the white particles in there, which looks a little bit And better. the color? Since zirconium implant is white as the bone, do you see the difference while removing surgically an implant? I know it has been addressed, but for those that it is an issue. Well, well, uh, it's the same. It's the same with with titanium implants. I, I stay with a trefine burr. If you use the trefine burr and you hit the implant, I mean, what can you do? You go back up and try to find the right direction. The same with the, the zirconia implants. If you are stuck, you go back and try to change your direction. Exactly. So no different than going. Do you have experience with expression? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Two hundred and fifty. Yes. I, mean, I, mean, I mean, basically, you, I mean, you try you try to avoid these, these situations, but. Uh, I mean, the, I mean, the main difference is that uh, I mean, whether you're able or not to, to engage in the connection of the implant, you need to try to unscrew the implant. That's actually a, a question coming in live from uh, Osama Pyra. How yes. about removing with high torque? Yes, yeah, that's, that's the point. But you know, very often, very often, if you have a patient coming in with another system, implant system, so you don't have these components. So very often, we are not using this technique. So in the majority of the cases, I mean, I end up really using, I mean, either you use some other instrument or really you have to remove the bone. And of course, if, you're, if, you, if you have to use, or if you, if you can use the high torque, then probably with the zirconia, the implant is going to break at some point. So the titanium implant removal is for sure slightly easier. Exactly. Slightly. But it's still messy, complex, and well, yeah. If, if you use the trefine, if you can do it like you said, engaging in reverse torque and you get it out, it's, it's more easy. Exactly. Eva, anything you would still like to address to our uh, speakers at the moment to better understand where we had? Well, uh, I, w I wanted to ask uh, Goran regarding uh, uh, regarding uh, zirconia uh, implants. Uh, you addressed the uh, narrow diameter implant. Uh, in those cases in which we are using narrow diameter implants, we cannot go for zirconia implants. But what about implant lengths of zirconia implants? We didn't talk about that. Do they need to be longer compared to titanium implants or not? For primary stability and clinical performance. Just to touch 
the length? Since we know about diameter, it needs to be at least four. I mean, the, I mean, the primary stability is is really really mainly 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 influenced by the by the type of uh, of the macro design and the, the taper and the, the how aggressive the threads are. So I think, I think there is no difference there. And uh, maybe the only difference is that the, I think the majority of the systems with the Zikona implant, they start maybe at, from eight millimeter. How short Thanks. can we go? I think. The majority uh, is 10. I think one company eight. is selling eight. Yes. 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 So the, the, just, just the portfolio is not, is still not there like titanium. But I mean, it's probably there's no difference. Hold on. Please use the mic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so in length, there's, there's, you say the length is not a key issue on the bio, biomechanical performance. Yes, since the OS integration is not different. Exactly, that's the same. All right. Um, at the moment, I don't see a lot of uh, questions coming in anymore, so I would like to look forward with you a little bit together. Next year, we're in Lisbon, Congress 2019. What do you think in relation to the topic of, of the materials and the different materials, pros and cons, that we will be discussing then? What, what will you be working on in the next year? Well, I don't think that in, in one year we're going to be able to get many more information. I mean, just it's going to take much more time to get really the long-term data. So I think next year is not going to be a major, major change on the concepts. Are you aware of any studies currently going on in this field? Yes, there are many studies. I think Ralph also... Professor Kochel conducting some studies. You have <laughs> done a lot of research. Uh, is there something ongoing in terms of titanium versus zirconia? Uh, not at our university uh, momentarily, but I know that other universities are conducting, hopefully, such studies, and also the companies are conducting such studies. Exactly. Now, the theme of the Congress is dreams and reality in implant dentistry. Let's broaden the topic a bit. Let's go a, a bit beyond this zirconia versus titanium debate. If you would have to dream for implant dentistry, what do you hope that we get on in the next one, two, three, four, five years? I dream of placing implants with a telekinetic, <laughs> you know? So, re remote surgery? Remote, no, I mean, no surgery, just the implant goes in. This is my dream for the next three to five. It's a joke, come on. Yeah, yeah, I know, but we <laughs> are here you, very you, you stay at your home and just, just play the implant? Yes, and think, well, implant go in. Like a drone? as well. Well, yeah. Everything. Everything. Well, well, the, the reason I react seriously is that in a lot of medical fields, the, the robotic surgery, or at least the remote surgery, becomes a big topic. Do you see that entering the field of implant dentistry as well? It, 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 it started already with the, with the robots placing the implants. And not, not a robot, but you as a, as a dentist are doing that. I know that this will come long of short or, or longer, but, but I'm, I'm, I'm no friend of, of this robotic stuff. Why is uh, that? Uh, because I would be, I also have patients sometimes, not often, but sometimes, and uh, I don't want to be treated by a robot. <laughs> it's funny, yeah, yeah, it's so... It's, it's, it's some, something, something emotional, as we had on the discussion, it's something emotional. <laughs> I want to be touched by a cold, or whether you can heat it up, iron hand or something like that. So robotics for me, well, no. It might, be, might more go to the biological field, re, uh, regeneration of, of bone and soft tissue. This, hopefully that's going to be easier in the future. You don't have to take bone blocks or some other materials from other uh, uh, species and so on and so forth. This I would like to have in the near future. I, I like funny if we somehow, if we link it to this discussion. So a patient says, "I don't want any steel or metal in my body, so I want the <laughs> zirconia yeah, implant." The and then here's my steel <laughs> robot, <laughs> <laughs> roboting. By the way, I hope I'm we, not. We can do the robots out of zirconia, actually. Well, maybe yeah. that's an interesting. But that's another it's industry. A market, it's a market. Yeah. Uh, Goran, Goran, if you dream for the future of implant dentistry, what is what are some of the key developments you see? Okay, so I'm going to try to try to be a little little bit more 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 pragmatic. So I think I would really like to have a. Um, a, hu a large portfolio of zirconia implants, like for example, a really uh, uh, different types of uh, soft and bone level two-piece zirconia implants. And uh, I think that uh, if we get the information that the long-term performance performance is the same, I think I would be very willing to switch completely from uh, titanium to uh, zirconia implants. And uh, otherwise, my uh, other interest is the field of the GBR. And uh, if you think about the personalized medicine, this is another big, big topic. I mean, together with just for our layman viewers, I've been hearing the term GBR a bit more. What is exactly what that? Uh, it's a guided bone regeneration. Exactly. So the bone augmentation field. Uh, I would like to have the break uh, to see the breakthrough of the customized uh, prefabricated blocks. So basically, for 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 every single patient, that depending on the defect, so which is uh, 
diagnosed on the 3D imaging, so we, we can use these prefabricated customized blocks to really to facilitate the clinical handling. So it's, it's the ideal combination of the digital workflow, yes. the 3D modeling into 3D printing, and then with a robot surgeon implemented. That, would that be the industry? I mean, you can do it even with your hands. Exactly, yeah, yeah. Well, I would like to hear from you as well. What, what do you hope, what is your dream for implant dentistry? Well, I'm going to be even more pragmatic. Uh, well, si since we've experienced a lot of advantages in restorative material development, I also hope I'm here with uh, two speakers that uh, no well implant materials are going, going to take their place. But in a really everyday practice, I hope for implant dentistry without complications and really long-term success rate of both our restorations and implants in the future. For now, Rolf Kowal, thank you very much for being with us. Goran Benitz, thank you. And Eva Milinkovic, thank you very much for being my expert co-host. Stay tuned. <laughs>